Jared Poland, Fronosphoto.com, and this is the Sony A9 Three. Now we have it hands on right here, but this is different than what we've done in the past because we were not briefed beforehand and basically nobody in the world was briefed. That's why we wanna get you the main specs as quickly as possible, along with some thoughts that I have about this and what this means for the industry because what is in this camera is absolutely insane. I look at it as a gut punch to Nikon, a gut punch to Canon, because what Sony did here is kind of revolutionary. You are talking about a global shutter sensor. Now, for those of you who haven't heard of that before, global shutter means when you press that shutter button, all pixels are recording at the same exact time. In the olden days, and by olden days, we mean like A92, uh, all the other A1, all of the cameras, they would scan down. They would do it quickly, but now you are taking a picture and opening up all of those pixels at once and exposing them at the same time. That means no more bowing is going to happen of the golf clubs or baseball bats or warped balls or footballs and elongated anything. This is a global shutter sensor. They all fire at once. That also means you are not going to get any warping when it comes to shooting video because it's firing all of those at once. So you are able to shoot at 120 frames per second at 24.6 megapixels. They've added the pre-shooting, which is something that I've wanted for a long time. So up to a second before you are pre-capturing raw files. Yes, you are shooting full raw at 120 frames per second. Now that's gonna be a compressed raw. You get something like 192, 196 frames, 1.6 seconds of shooting shooting at 120 frames a second. Full autofocus, that means you're not gonna miss anything anymore. If you do miss it, it means that there might be something wrong with how you were shooting, but that's insane. And when it comes to how fast you can shoot in terms of a shutter speed, you are looking at one 80 thousandth of a second. That is the fastest thing that we've ever seen. And for those who like to shoot flash, there's no more sync speed. You can sync at any speed that you want to shoot a shutter, uh, your shutter speed at all the way up to 1 80th thousandth of a second, which is insane. So you still have the two card slots, the CF Express A and SD card slots there. You've got your Bion's XR processor. That's how you're going to be able to process everything super fast. Uh, you've got your full-time AF with 14-bit when you're shooting those 120 frames per second. There is a speed boost button that they added. They call it a C5 button. So if you're shooting at 20 frames per second, like the A9 II used to do, you can then hit the speed boost, locks it off into 120 frames per second, so you can use that really quick. Now, how that works when you go to pick a, an image is you basically are watching a video on the back of your camera, and then you select the one image that you want, and that is how you select the file that is the keeper from those 120 frames per second. Of course, it's blackout free, it's going to be flicker free, and you're not gonna see banding on any of the boards in the background like I would see when I shot soccer matches. There would always be banding in the background on those boards. That's not gonna happen anymore with the global shutter. In terms of your autofocus, you've got the best autofocus that you have probably ever seen in the camera. It uses all of the latest and greatest AI technology that helps you track the subjects, IAF. Oh, and you can even shrink the boxes down even smaller and take more control of the size of the box so you can pinpoint where you want the autofocus. And from just holding on to it fairly quick, it is super fast. But like I said, we are gonna get hands-on and we'll bring you a separate video there, but right now it's all about those main specs. 759 phase detect autofocusing points covering 96% of the frame. You get eight stops of IBIS just with the body. So if you have a lens that doesn't have image stabilization, you're still getting eight stops built in right now. Let me jump in here real quick and let you know this video is brought to you by b &H. If you're looking to pre-order this, there's a link on the screen as well as down below in the description that you can go ahead and pre-order this or the brand new 300 2.8 as well as find out some more information. But if you don't have the PayBoo card yet, well, you can pick up the PayBoo card over there and save so much money in tax. Because what happens with the PayBoo card from b &H is that you make a purchase and they give you the tax back after you pay it. So you are saving big. The link is down below to get the pay boo as well as to pre-order this camera. Now let's get back to the video. 
quickly onto the video. You are 6K oversampled, 4K 60 video. You've got 4K 120 with no crop at all, 10-bit 422 all I. In terms of the screen, you have the same one that you find on the back of the A7R5. You pop it, you can rotate it, pull it out, flip out, rotate it, anything you want. They basically give you the best of everything that you need here because if you just wanna flip it down, you can flip it down. It doesn't go all the way down, but at least it puts it on an angle so when you hold this over your head, you're gonna be perfectly fine. The big question here, how much is it? We're talking $6,000 for this body, which you have an A1, you're like, what do I want at this point? They put their best technology into this and you have your 24 megapixels. What does this say? to Canon, and what does this say to Nikon? Well, Nikon's kind of in trouble with the sports shooters because why would you buy the Nikon when you can have something like this because this does so much more. And if you're an R3 shooter like I currently am, I mean, this technology is insane. I want what this has. I want the pre-shooting. I want the 120 frames per second. That's what I want. So it's gonna be interesting to see what Canon comes out with with an R1 because if they don't hit with a global shutter at that point, I mean, Sony nailed it with this. So they also announced the 302.8, which we do have a review coming out on later. We did film that already. I shot soccer. It was a great lens, unbelievable with what it can do. But for now, this is the Sony A93. They refined it ever so slightly to feel better in the hands. Still doesn't feel as good as a Canon R3, but the technology in it is what you really care about. And what they gave it with the pre-shooting, that's all I really care about. 24 megapixels is enough. I've been shooting it for years, but 120 frames per second and pre-shooting means I'm not gonna miss the things that I was just a little bit late on. So let me know what you guys think down below. What do you wanna see us test with this? And that's it. Thank you guys very much for watching. Jared Poland, Photo.com. See ya. Dear Chris and Jordan, <laughs> it has been nice knowing you. I'm gonna go shoot some rocks. Puddles. Oh, and puddles with reflections.